Hello fellow chess players, this is Shady Graves and I'm here today to offer up this tutorial on chess bases training functionality. By the way, I'm not a chess base expert, but I find this particular uh, feature incredibly useful. So let's jump in. First of all, um, in the case that you're not even familiar with the training feature within chess base, let me just launch into uh, a database that I've created for training purposes and you can see what I'm talking about. So you notice that uh, we have a board here. There's already been a move played. And if you look behind this dialog, you'll see that there's a PGN file. So I want to rehearse the accelerated dragon. I want to learn a particular line. So I've created a PGN file. I've annotated moves for black, which are the moves that I'm interested in. So chess base will play white and I will play black and I'm not playing the computer per se. I'm playing against chess base and chess base is actually just making the moves that I've already assigned in my PGN file. So it's a great way to practice a particular variation. Okay. Or a particular line opening, whatever. So it's prompting me to make a move for black. I have a comment in here that says make the first move for black. I actually typed that in when I created this file. Um, there's a few options down here. The solution is pretty much always lit in case you can't figure out what the answer is. You can click on this and it'll show you the answer. And by the way, when it does that, it does not let you make the move. It'll uh, show you the answer and then it'll enable the next question. And when you click on next question, it's going to make the move that you couldn't find. It's going to make the move for white in this case. And then you're going to be prompted to make the following move. So just keep that in mind. Uh, in fact, uh, let me just show you that right now. So let's say, for example, that we couldn't figure out what move to make here. So we did this, not the best move. We try again. We do this, not the best move. And at this point, I'm getting fed up. So I just say, well, what is the right move? Tells me C7 to C5. Um, so at this point, all I can do is do next question. So it made that move, and it made the following move for white. And now we're back being prompted for our move. Okay, so we pick it up from here. And now we just play through the line that we uh, want to rehearse. And it's pretty straightforward, just a great tool. Um, if you're practicing a lot of different openings or variations in a particular opening, uh, this is a great way to uh, learn those moves because you're really not, you know, I mean, I guess you could cheat and look over here, but this kind of blocks most of it, so you're really forced to do it from memory. Uh, notice that when you make a castling move, um, when you're prompted to make a move, if you castle, it only moves half of the move. I don't know why, but it waits for you to hit the next question, and then it'll move the castle over or the rook over, um, and complete the castling move. Okay, so now uh, we're, it's our move again. And, okay, so that's the last move in this file. So there you go. We just rehearsed um, a line for the accelerated dragon, and it's waiting for us to hit load next game. If we had another PGN file in that database, it would automatically load that just by clicking this button, and we could rehearse that, that variation of that opening. At the moment, we don't, so clicking it just drops back into our PGN file. Okay, so um, that's what the training feature is. I find it incredibly useful. In fact, I've probably used it to learn 10 different openings. Not that I play them all the time, and by now maybe I even forgot most of them, but um, at one point, you know, on a regular basis, I would go through uh, a repertoire for black or white, and I found this to be the best way for me to uh, learn those lines. Um, so now let me show you how to create these files. First thing you have to do is you have to have a database. And the way you create the database for training is you just either right click and hit new database or you can just click on the button over here. Um, you have to tell it where you want the database to reside. In this case I want it on my hard drive and by default it pulls up the my work directory within chess base. That's fine with me. I called it demo database obviously I just type that in and I hit create new when you do that you're gonna get a blank looking database it'll just be a rectangle a rectangle 
and you want to right click on that go to properties select training I uh, also use this feature here this is called training and it's a random option so what this does is after you load up all your PGN files within a particular database you uh, if this is selected the, uh, the way it works is that when you double click that database, it'll launch you into a, a PGN that it will randomly select. Okay, so what I mean is I could launch this file right from this view, or I could launch this file just by double clicking the database. And that's because that option was selected. So if I deselect this, hit OK. Um, and I double click this it brings me into a view of the database and I can still select this file right here and go into training okay but the point I'm trying to make is if you have numerous files PGN files in your training database and if this is selected you can just double click the database and it will launch you into one of those files randomly selected and off you go training okay so that's how you create the database um, we have this file in here that I had pre-populated for this tutorial and now let's go ahead and create a file I'll show you how to do that so you can create your own training uh, PGN files first thing you want to do is launch a board go ahead and start making your moves just like you would create a PGN in any other situation notice it's copying down all of our moves over here um, I think I'll probably go with the uh, Meroxy bind. Let's see. Actually, let me take that back. That's not the move I would normally play. I would have done that. Um, and when I when I rehearse openings, I usually go all the way through castling, and I like to do at least one move beyond that, just because once you castle, as I was explaining before, it only does half the move, and I don't like to leave it hanging like that, so I do at least a move beyond castling for whatever side I'm annotating. Um, and that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, so that's good enough for now. Um, so we have a line here. It's a variation on uh, the Sicilian. It's the Meroxy bind, and we're trying to play the Accelerated Dragon. So I'm going to now uh, annotate this file so that when I launch it next time, it'll be prompting me to make these moves. First thing you want to do is go back to the beginning, click on the Training tab. There's two things that we're going to use here. One is the Enable Training, and one is the Training Annotation. I'm going to turn this off for now. And uh, I usually turn that on right when I right before I save the file for the final time. Um, and the reason for that is because it tends to hide comments and things that are in the PGN file. And uh, so I usually wait until I'm all done with it, and then I'm going to save it, and then I'll enable that and save it. Okay, so what we need to do now is annotate. And the way this works is you need to make the move that you want to be prompted for. Uh, so when you're in the rehearsal mode, you're prompted to make moves. And the way it works in here is you need to make that move first, and then you click on the annotation, and uh, off you go. Okay, but you got to remember that you got to do that first. You got to make the move first. So in other words, white moves. We're not annotating white. We don't want to be prompted for white. We want to be prompted for black. So we make the black move, and then we annotate. And what this does is it brings up this dialog here, and you can actually type in some comments. Um, you know, sometimes I have so many training databases that I actually forget when it pops up what I was actually trying to practice. So I usually try to give myself a hint to get me started in the right path here. Um, there's some other features here that you can play around with. Um, I've probably experimented with them, but nothing really stuck with me. I'm fine with just the comment. You can change the score per move over here. You can change the time. Uh, in fact, why don't we just see what happens if we make this five seconds? I think it's going to time out and then we'll get the ant the question wrong, but I've never tried it, so why not do it now? Hit OK. So now that move has been annotated and we'll be prompted to make that move when we launch this file in a training mode. So make the move for white, make the move for black, and then annotate.
I'm not even going to put anything in here. You don't need to. As long as it's annotated, you'll be prompted to make the move. Make the move white, black, annotate. And if you're not caring about having comments in those dialog boxes, you can just click right through this and annotate. And uh, it's actually pretty fast. You know, I think I just saw that that five seconds is now part of every annotation, which I wasn't trying to do. So let me fix that. And uh, in fact, that'll give me an opportunity to show you how you can um, remove or modify an annotation. So here's the end of the line now. Everything's annotated. We should be prompted for all these moves. If you notice, every move that we annotated has these little three stars next to it. So I think the first one here um, is where I set the five seconds because I want to test that and see if it really works that way. Um, if I wanted to remove this annotation, all I do is hit remove. And now I'm no longer prompted for that move. Let's put it back though. And I want to try this five second thing. So we'll say okay. However, I did not want five seconds on the rest of these. So I'm going to put this back to 300. So this, like I said, this gives me an opportunity to show you how you can modify something that you've already annotated or even remove the annotation. Pretty straightforward, I think. Okay, so now we're back on track. Okay, so this file has now been annotated and it should uh, throw us into a training mode when we open it, but only if we enable training. And I'll do that now. You notice how everything vanished. That's what I was explaining to you before. So I usually wait until I'm all done before I click that. Um, let's save this file. We need to tell it where to save it. So we're gonna tell it to go to the demo database where our other uh, training file is residing. This path is on my hard drive, so I'm navigating to my hard drive. Um, all I'm doing at this point is selecting the database. I'm not naming the file. Just selecting the database, and now I want to give this a name. We'll call it demo or oxybind. Hit OK. And let's just make sure that it's in our database, and there it is. So we'll go ahead and close it out. And now when we launch this database, it will randomly pick one of these two files. Uh, before we do that, let's just double click this and make sure that it's working correctly. Okay, please enter a move for black. I will. Oh, I wanted to test that uh, timer. Well, we'll do that next time we open it. <sighs> I moved even under five seconds, I guess. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So it looks like it's working just fine. Actually, I'm not sure which move I made. I think I made this move. No? Okay. So I must have... Did I throw this out here? No? Oh, I'm in a castle. There you go. Now you notice it only made half the move. And when I hit next question, it will complete the castle, okay? And now that's the end of our file. Okay, so let me just show you if you hit load next game. Um, it actually did pull up the accelerated dragon, not the Maroxy bind version. And, um, you know, I guess theoretically it's random, so I guess it could have pulled up the same file since we only have two files in there, but it didn't. Um, and we don't need to go through this. I just wanted to show you that that load, load next game is actually pretty useful. And now let's close out of this. So now what I wanted to show you was that because we had that random feature selected, remember in properties, all we need to do is double click this database and it picked one of them. It picked the accelerated dragon. I guess we had a 50-50 shot. Let's close it out and see if we can get the Maroxy bind so that we can test that five second thing. Anyways, so let's go in there. I wanted to test that out for you. You can see that the random feature works. I mean, um, and you can see how it works when you double click on the database. So there, it timed me out. Um, but it didn't give me the next question, so I still get to make the move. 
However, it gave me a zero for this move. So that's interesting. Okay, so hopefully uh, you find this useful. Um, like I said, I use it all the time. It's a great feature. I don't know where else you can do this. And uh, if there's something I can help you with related to this, please let me know. Uh, just reach out to me, and if I can help you, I will. And otherwise, uh, have fun playing chess.